we are blessed with a part two of any news's episode four season three content on ReZero. How Subaru's attack on the witch cult really went. Give it to me. Last video, we highlighted Garfield's despair and the preparations of the Counter Witch Cult Task Force, so this video will finish up that episode and show how that battle really went. I recommend watching last video first though, since the cut details on Capella and Garfield are actually pretty interesting. You can find that down in the description below. We've seen it! To focus on episode 54 part 2 though, this is the operation to retake City Hall. Chapter 5 from volume 17 of the Light Novel. Starting right where we left off, to further stress just how much Garfield was going through it right now, he failed to protect his newfound family, failed to fulfill his oath to serve as a shield, then challenged an enemy on his own judgement and got beat because of it. Failed to, I don't know, size up against Reinhardt too in episode 1. Dude, Garfield just been taking L after L after L after L. Like, like, the amount of mental turmoil he must be going through is probably crazy. Are we building up to some crazy explosion moment? Now he had to sit here, witnessing just how insignificant all his efforts were, because in comparison to him and his feeble attempts at healing Mimi, Felix's own level of healing was incomparable. The amount of- I'm tired of the fucking Felix guys. Motherfucker is still glazing Felix. Saying Felix is so goaded, bro. Felix is a fraud. Maybe not in the source material, but in the anime episodes. If you truly are judging Felix just based on the anime episodes, bro, from season one, Felix has been a fraud. Can't fucking fix the gate. Can't have the presence of mind to cleanse people during the White Whale subjugation. Did save Subaru from the explosion stuff. No, that's, that was Ia. Felix, like, tanked that explosion against the fingers, right? In, like, episode 23. What else? In season 2. Tried to disband the alliance and got called out for it. Can't fucking do anything about the fucking memories or the name loss, right? Because, yeah, sure, whatever. Can't heal, you know, Mimi beyond, you know, what's it's limited. It's just like, everything Felix has done has just been massive L's. And maybe, like, healing the massive amount of people that were injured at the town square, for sure. That is pretty good, but... Dude, that's like the most basic shit you could do. You're the greatest fucking water mage in the fucking kingdom, and this is your limit? The mana he pre well, like, like, healing, like, like, healing people? Reattaching their arms and shit? Nah. Nah, bro. You tell me this is Lugunica's greatest water mage? It's fucking fraudulent beyond redemption. I'm waiting for something crazy to happen. Why can't Felix do anything? There's always limitations. Authorities or fucking uh, divine protections or, or some different thing that prevents Felix from being able to like fully heal somebody. Like, I don't know, man. Based on the anime episodes we've seen, everything tells me that Felix does not size up to the lore glaze that I've heard of. Produced made Garfield's look like a drop of rain. It made it seem as if even the dead could be brought back to life with it. When Felix's efforts failed to do anything too, though, that's when the price of Garfield's actions were made clear. He could only wallow in despair as the phantom haunting him watched him from a distance. She didn't say anything or nice even angle. smile, but instead just stared blankly as if to hammer home that this was the consequences of his actions. So, with Felix's initial attempts not doing anything, he would have to rush Mimi down to the hospital, then treat her using what we would consider more conventional methods. Okay. That's right. Felix was also quite the surgeon as well. Wow. He was more than capable of stitching Mimi up manually. Wow. That's why they needed to bring her here, since this was the only place that surgery could be done. Now, it was while such treatment was happening that Lust's broadcasts continued repeatedly. Her insults and intimidation never stopped for- Let's shut on Felix more. This is surgery? Bro, I could tie my own fucking shoe, and you're gonna call that fucking surgery? You stitching! This isn't an open heart surgery, this ain't a fucking brain surgery! You fucking closing up a wound by stitching it! Motherfucker! High school students after taking a fucking home rec class could do this shit! It's happening that Lust's broadcasts continued repeatedly. Her insults and intimidation never stopped for a second. Subaru had tried to ignore it as best he could, but beyond her incessant noises, he heard something else. It was a sound he instinctively Insects. rejected due to how awful it was, but the more he focused, the more he realized this was the sound of buzzing insects. Whoa, any news going out of his way to add in his own insect sound effect because the source material, sound, uh, the anime episode sound effects 
did not really sound like insects. I don't know really what, what was going on. It was like grinding, twisting. It was an unfathomable number of them oh, buzzing God. around, mixing in with the sounds oh, of the broadcast. Get out of there, Sakura. Grinding, we heard ourselves in the anime. The intention was to forcibly induce anxiety, since the disgusting nature of it did nothing but manifest the noise of nightmares. It was the supposed punishment for Garfield's transgressions earlier. And I think that because we saw dead bodies in the town square when Garfield Mimi was there, and when we came back for the counterattack, those places where the corpses were have been replaced with these insect-like larva hatch things that you might see in like StarCraft Zerg. I think that this is Capella shit, right? The insects that we heard in the broadcast and what those egg-like larva thing must be, I think there's a connection there. Now, to further clarify Ooh. on Mimi's wound here, the unhealable nature of it was a direct result of the Grim Reaper's blessing. There it is. A blessing we know from last season only one person could possibly possess. Teresia. This was information cut from season two, so if you'd rather be surprised and keep the spoiler secret, then go ahead and skip to here. If not, the identity of this person was known to be Teresia, mm -hmm. the previous sword saint and Wilhelm's dare departed wife. How is she alive though? Reinhardt quote unquote killed Teresia. Pandora. I always just blame Pandora when there's fucky things going on. Such news led Wilhelm to reveal the old, unhealed wound his wife previously left him, which was now freshly open due to his close proximity to her. As we should have learned back during season What is better? To be hit with the steel chair out of nowhere and have Teresia show up? Or for the audience to have been fed this cut content in season 2, and then after a long time, Teresa shows up and the audience being able to make the connections. The reason why people glaze One Piece so much is not because of the bullshit that just happens out of nowhere, but because of the hundreds and hundreds of chapters of setup and foreshadowing that's been done. I feel like... Why did they... Why, why did White Fox... Why did, why did Studio White Fox and Tape do this? I don't understand. I, I feel like the foreshadowing definitely makes the audience more engaged rather than sitting passively back and something crazy happening. It's like, oh my god, what happened? That, 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 that's a shock factor, that too. But I, I think the whole aspect of learning the show and really getting into it and trying to understand all the different foreshadowings that's happened and try to link that to future theories and then to have that shit happen is a much more satisfying feeling. To episode one, this was how the blessing of the Grim Reaper worked. Prolonged distance to her, the person who inflicted it, may help the wound to close over time, but as soon as the injured gets anywhere near her again, yeah. the wound would instantly open back up as if it was fresh. Right now, Wilhelm is fighting Teresio. Obviously, the wound has opened, so he's kind of nerfed right now. And Mimi, Mimi's injury is on the stomach, so this is, like, different. Right, Like, Wilhelm's, this sucks that it's on the shoulder, but it's not, like, a lethal injury. If your fucking stomach starts opening up, you know, Mimi really can't be around Teresio at all. This was what was happening to Wilhelm's 15-year-old wound right now, as his previously white bandages were now stained red. The whole thing was a very emotional burden for him. Now, why did he get... Why did Teresa even slash him 15 years ago? Everything lines up to the first white whale subjugation. We know that Sword Demon wasn't even there because he was involved in Felt's kidnapping shit. You know, not and involved, but like, you know, taking after that issue. And that's why Teresa was alone with her own people, rather than, you know, Wilhelm also being there. And we also know that Reinhardt is the one that killed Teresia. Maybe when they came back, Wilhelm couldn't defeat this Teresia, but Reinhardt had to do it for Wilhelm. I thought that episode one of season three kind of implied that Wilhelm wasn't even there, and Reinhardt took care of it, then he came back, then it happened. So I'm trying to figure out, like, why the fuck did he even get this injury? Was, if we, if we just, why would Reinhardt even, like, Kill Teresia. I'm going to assume that Teresia got like possessed, that she turned evil or some shit, right? I don't know how, but I'm just going to assume that. At that point, did she cut Wilhelm when he came back after his kidnapping mission stuff? I don't know. Or was this even before the White Whale subjugation? Why? Why would a wife cut their husband? Other than the husband never telling the wife, I love you. Never. He never said that shit. He said it here. Uh, a crazy mental gymnastics you could do is somehow in case that Teresia unexpected events may happen, this cut will be used as like a, as like a radar, like a Dragon Ball radar to find Teresia in the future. But that, that, that's way too much of a reach. To think his wife could still be alive after all these years, 
Well, the thought certainly weighed very heavily on him, especially if she was fighting for the witch cult now. What Wilhelm knew for certain, though, was that whoever Teresia was now, it certainly wasn't the Teresia he knew that died 15 years ago. Yeah, I wonder if she's gonna have like a different name, because there's this pattern of people just like, quote unquote, dying, then fucking respawning at the cult. Uh, like Fortuna, if she really is Fortuna serious, right? Teresia, we'll see about it. No, there would be no hesitation to cut her down, and whoever desecrated her soul like this, well, the sword devil would show no mercy. Hmm, could it be like a possession thing where it's Teresia's body? She still has all the divine protections and blessings and whatever. And that's why the Grim Reaper stuff is still active, but it's not like the Teresia soul that we used to know and it's been replaced. Maybe. Wilhelm wasn't the only one emanating this fierce conviction, since with Mimi's life now at stake too, Ricardo also had a strong reason to fight himself. He would let out this pure bestial anger to show just how committed he was. Ricardo's uh, fight animation last episode was sick against the eight, eight arm guy, that Machoke guy. A promise of revenge that really resonated Machamp. with Garfield. Moving on to Subaru's game plan now, the primary concern was of course the media. Mm. As for why? Well, with the witch cult possessing an authority that- I think Meteor sounds cooler than Meteor. I don't wanna- s I, I know it should be Meteor, but Meteor, I, I just like that sound better amplified emotions and resonated them, there was no telling how such an ability could be augmented and enhanced by the media. The level of disaster, if it was possible, would be unfathomable. Mm. It's for that reason saving Amelia came second, since if the city was destroyed, Subaru wouldn't be able to save Amelia anyway. Is this why um, Al said, wow, Subaru, you're pretty twisted, bro? I was always trying to think about like why he said that. And what did Al do? He left the party to go seek Priscilla, the person that matters to him the most. Subaru did kind of the opposite. Rather than go seek Amelia out, he prioritized something, you know, on a grander scale, even if it's not his personal priority. And then Al said that because of the difference of the acts? I'm not sure. That being the case, if the first step was to secure the media, then by association, it also meant confronting lust. Now. As strong as everyone present was, Subaru would have liked to be joined by Kiritaka's private white dragon scale force as well. Ooh. They were securing the rest of the Council of Ten though, so that was arguably more important than securing the media. Reason being that if any of the Council was captured then interrogated for information, mm. the reveal of Tifon's immovable status could result in Lust destroying the city anyway. I love it! Fuck Typhon! It's Tifon. I love it. Luckily, Al knew they wouldn't have to face multiple archbishops at once, since by Lust's own admission, each was stationed at a different control tower. Yeah, and every time the bell rings, right? Ding dong, new hour reaches. Okay, now they gotta like back off because the plan of the gospel is more important. So we've been bailed out by that like twice now, right? Both Sirius and Regulus, they fucked off when the bell rang. Probably, you know, gluttony to lie. And then last episode where we're like, you know, Capella's there, you know, we're like shooting attacks at her and she's like, all right, I'll go away now. This presented the possibility they might not even be cooperating since as Subaru saw himself, Sirius and Regulus almost took each other out. It was clear they weren't the harmonious group Lust was trying to make them out to be. Plus to think such absurd personalities could work together, well, that was very difficult to envision. So, though this was just all opinion, the plausibility of it was high. I wonder how we could turn the archbishops against each other since they're united by probably Pandora and the gospel. How can we gaslight? They just obey the gospel. Like, it's the fucking law, even though they all hate, like, don't get along. If Subaru could figure the way this, if, if he could just figure it out, right? If he could just figure it out to make them turn on each other, this would be so much easier. It was after this that Felix would exit his surgery, stating how he stopped the bleeding but the wound was still open. Fortunately, the blessing of thirds kept- I don't think we could just steal their gospels and scribble, scribble on, on the writing and, and write different shit. You think they're that dumb? <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe, that'd be a funny solution. 
kept Mimi going, so that shared fatigue and pain was what was keeping her alive. In fact, with just how devastating such a wound was, in order to help Mimi just a little bit more, her brothers strengthened that bond so that they could take a greater share of pain than usual. Right, it was a divine protection of trisection? I forget the exact term, but because I saw blood on Hetaro and Tibi when we were talking through them through the media, right? There seems to be like a link on all three of them. Shared damage, maybe? I don't think these two also received actual like cuts or you know, the divine protection of the Grim Reaper, but they probably lessened the lethal, lethal damage that could have been for Mimi. This gave them more time in prolonging Mimi's life, but the caveat was that if Mimi died, they likely would as well. Really? So, with Hetero oh, and Tibi out of commission too, that meant- Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have the- Do they have the cuts? I couldn't- I can't really see. I see like a stain of the red, but like where's the blood coming from then? It's gotta be an open wound, I guess. I don't know. I thought that maybe it's just like a visual effect of red stain, but- if they die, then so if Mimi dies, they all die together. Holy shit. Buy one, get three. Deal, man. It'd be fucked up to kill off Hetaro TV and Mimi. If that actually happened, Anastasia would take considerable damage to her forces. And she's been kind of low-key succeeding the most out of all of them. And she most likely baited us here after having this prior knowledge that the Archbishops would show up to Pristilla to retrieve Trifon's uh, remains. Would the author kill off Mimi and the rest of the siblings to make them kind of <laughs> worse? Ah, that's fucked up. I don't want Mimi to die. I'm just glad that she got a lethal injury. That's it. That's kind of fucked up to say, but it's better than being dead. I, 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 I truly thought that she was going to die based on all the different slice of life. And all the different things that they were showing us in the previous episodes and being associated with Garf, it's like she's the prime target for something fucked up to happen and the audience to feel bad. It's just how that works. Slice of life means life's about to get sliced. Oh, and TB out of commission too? That meant all three of their lives were now in the hands of Ricardo. If any of them were gonna live, then the witch cult lady needed to be defeated and fast. Yeah. It was a problem that warranted the full force of the White Fang. All that was left was for Anastasia to give the order, which she had no problem doing since she too was bothered by the current predicament. I, I ain't gonna lie, White Fang kinda trash. It's only Ricardo and the triplets, bro. All these other fucking hooded cat neko fucking people, I ain't seen them do anything. I mean, this was after all her family. She may act tough when amongst all these people, but deep down she truly cared for Mimi and all the others. So. With the team now established, Crucia's involvement was one founded on duty. Her opinion on the matter was just as strong as it would have been had she not lost her memories. What I mean is that she understood it was her job to fight and that by not doing so, it would be the civilians that suffered. She got that Crucia soul still there, even if the memories are gone, right? There is still the origin DNA of that always acts like this. It was the true wholehearted conviction of someone dedicated to the people. Al had left due to new concerns over Priscilla, but what he also mentioned was that he wasn't good at these fights. According to him, he believed he would just hold everyone back. Nah, I don't think it. He's lying. Fuck you. Nope. I don't, no, 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 I don't believe that for a moment. I bet he's goaded at fighting. Or maybe he sucks. He's like a gladiator dude. He, he was straight up a gladiator for a long time in Valachia and then showed up here. He lost his arm back there, meaning that he might have been trash, actually. <laughs> she. Uh, I don't want to believe that Al is a terrible fighter. But with the recent break time announced, right? It's seemingly more and more that Al and Subaru, there's a connection. There is a link. It's same height, too, which is very precarious, right? It, they, they act, they're actually the same height. Uh, another thing is they're both isekai characters, right? The, another thing is that they're from the same fucking, you know, they're from Japan, Tokyo. Uh, another thing is Al knows Bieko's nickname without even knowing Bieko. Another thing is how Al says, all t I know all too well when Bieko says, only Subaru can call me that. It's just seeming, it just looks more and more like Al is like a Subaru from a different timeline. It, it, it's, it's crazy. Oh, what else is there? Oh, dude. Bro, do you, here's the craziest shit. Here's the craziest shit. Al's side stories, titles. 
I don't think this is necessarily spoilers. Because the side, it, it's simply like chapter titles of the side stories. And where I'm going with this is, one of the titles, I believe, I forget all of them, but there was the third title, which was really, really concerning. It's uh, the day he gave up following the star or something. And why does that matter? Why does it matter that Al stopped following a star? Because if, you've, if you know about the constellations, about the connection between Pleiades, which is Subaru, and Aldebaran, which is Al, Pleiades leads the way. Aldebaran points to Pleiades. Aldebaran could be now interpreted as Al follows Subaru. And if the side story says he stopped following, it could imply in the future that Al could be definitely an antagonist, right? There's like even more crazy theories that could happen with shit like that. That's why like the constellations are so fucking important. Same with the side stories. It's kind of like crazy, but I think that Al really is Subaru at this point. It, it, it's, it's insane the amount of data that now we've collected. It's not just like one, two, or three things. It's many, many, many different things. And then to tie it back in, does Al have an authority? I mean, the witch's miasma also you know, lingers on him. Back of his helmet. He hates Rem and Ram. That's external content. I don't know how the episodic memory loss you know, contributes to this shit, but is he really bad at fighting? Well, if Al is supposed to be Subaru, and Subaru really isn't a fighter, you know? He has some things, but he's more a utility strategist all throughout Season 1 and 2. Invisible Providence ain't fucking doing shit. EMM, in theory, sounds great until you realize, what do we do after that? The whip ain't doing shit for the most part. If we take these similarities, then Al maybe is a poor fighter. I don't want to believe that. I want Al to be like a Giga Chad. In any case... The biggest question is how can Subaru walk, and the easiest answer for that is Felix. Numbing. Despite significant pushback, Subaru had demonstrated resolve so incredibly adamant that Felix had no choice but to cave and use his special trick on him. He made it so Subaru's sense of pain went away. The slightest action would still Ooh. make it bleed again, but aside from that, Subaru could walk and maybe even run. Why do you have to nerf Subaru so much? He's already so fucking, not useless, but, you know, he doesn't contribute much in terms of, like, fighting. You, you gonna fucking nerf him even more right now? It was all because if there was even the slightest chance him and his tricks could support the others, then that was a chance he was willing to bet on. Even if it cost him his leg for good, the regret of that wasn't anywhere near comparable to the regret of doing nothing. So that's how Subaru was good to go here. Fast forward to the moments right before the attack, and as Ricardo, Garfield, and Wilhelm tensed up at the battle awaiting them, Julius would use his greater spirits to survey the area and do a bit of recon. Multi -spirits. With the only entrance being at the front, it made the only option for attack a direct one. So that meant Garfield and Ricardo would get their opportunity for revenge, while for Wilhelm, his fated encounter would come too. Mm -hmm. Subaru had hoped Julius could use his spirits to scout out inside City Hall too, but the danger of such a task was far too great for them. The hostages? Reason being that if the witch cult learned from their battle with Sloth, then there was a good chance they came prepared with anti-spirit measures. What? Did they even know how Betrigus got taken down under? No one was really there. No other archbishops really were there. Maybe they heard that, like, Julius took him out, and if Julius's name is as the Spirit Knight, maybe they did make counter spirit measures. It was a risk that could end up significantly diminishing Julius's fighting strength since his power was directly related to the number of spirits he had at his disposal. No, don't nerf Julius too! Reinhard nerfed because of Heinkel. Julius may get nerfed because of fucking, you know, the anti spirit measures. Uh, who else is nerfed right now? Fucking uh, Wilhelm is nerfed because of the injury. Mimi too, right? Super nerfed because of the injury. Dude, we're all so much nerfed. Everyone is just like... No one is peak right now. Krush is there. But like, a lot of the, our strong fighters, they're, they're all just getting nerfed. This brings us now to the start of the attack, which, as we saw, opened up with Krush's signature skill, One Blow 100 Fell. It was a lethal sword technique built off her Blessing of Wind reading, mm -hmm. one that carried her attack through the air, extending the reach of her sword by tens of yards. 
It says there's no regard for range. That's the fucking lore. In season one, yeah, Biko's nerfed too. In season one, Amelia low key kind of nerfed because she's taken by regular spot. Like, dude, they, the lore of this was that like it has no regard for range, and it's not like a sword specific thing either. It's she can do it with anything. It's just that this sword was kind of like fancy, and then she gave that shit to Wilhelm in season one after the White Wall subjugation. But she still used that same attack to Regulus and Lie in season two. By tens of Different yards. weapon though. Julius acted next, using three of his greater spirits to create a barrier of light. It restrained the witch cultists under a field of incredible pressure, Damn. bringing them to their knees and opening up the opportunity for everyone else to attack. I'm gonna guess there's too much animation stuff happening, that's why they cut it out, and that's why they cut out Capella breathing down fire too. This is where the fight starts to deviate from the anime, since from here Ricardo took on the giant alone while together Garfield and Wilhelm engaged the lady. There was a moment where both were about to land a hit, but I love after this art. the swift dodge and incredibly precise movements, the lady instead caught Garfield, broke his nose, then used him as a shield against Wilhelm. <laughs> she would then use the open- Use Garfield as a shield against Wilhelm? Garfield really is standing up to his fucking name. The strongest shield. ...were about to land a hit, but after a swift dodge and incredibly Ooh. precise movements, the lady instead caught Garfield, broke his nose, then used him as He's a shield against fucked Wilhelm. Up. She would then use the openings she just created in Wilhelm's defenses and land a powerful kick on him too. Damn. Now, Julius's fire spell, though seemingly very powerful, was actually nothing more than a bluff. It was a mere diversion intended to distract the witch cultists into thinking it was a threat. Really? This is because the spell was far too unrefined, making its core easily dispersible just as we saw in the anime. Yeah, she did cut it. I, I thought that they were trying to make like a significant uh, moment where Julius... It, it wasn't even just fire magic. It was like fire and wind combined or something. He was like doing like multi-spirit element magic. Whoa. I'm like sick, Julius. And then, and then she just put one foot down and just cut that shit with their sword. So I thought they were trying to tell us that Theresia built Diff. Like she could just cut magic with swords, but no, this shit was actually just a bluff. So, with the initial assault being unsuccessful, it did however reveal their two opponents were open to long-range attacks. That being the case, if they prioritized Julius's magic, Crucia's Windblade, and Subaru's Whip, then there was a good chance that they could beat them. <laughs> That's when Capella would arrive yeah, to right. interrupt though, instantly bringing both witch cultists down to their knees. As soon as they heard her unbearable screeching, they quickly showed their respects as if on instinct. This would have been a good opportunity to attack, but never once did either of the cultists let their guard down for a second. Though they were kneeling in reverence, at the same time they kept their eyes trained on Subaru and the others. It was a level of discipline only the most elite warriors could have. They are elite. Capella's entrance Very was elite. slightly nerfed in the anime, since rather than simply resting on top of the building, she was instead circling the sky, writhing in midair as she mocked and laughed at everyone. Her form as a dragon was sullied by the absurd movements she made, but that didn't change the fact her wings were the primary target. So long as they were still functional, it meant she could just rain dragon breath whenever she wanted. We didn't see a single dragon breath yet, man. What the fuck, White Fox? It was a scenario Wilhelm knew from experience they needed to avoid. Luckily for him, though... Experience? What kind of dragon subjugation have you gone on, old man? That same experience from four decades ago also... 40 years ago, he went up against a dragon, okay. Is this the side story where... Marcos's dad sacrificed himself to save Rachens' dad? And that's why Rachens' dad and Marcos have a good relationship. Is, is that the... I, I think there was like a different dragon subjugation, different side story in the past, four decades ago. Also made him more than confident Capella could be handled easily. In comparison to the fierce three-headed dragon Bargrin the Black, Capella was really nothing more than an insect. Three-headed dragon? Oh shit. That was a fucking Cerberus type of dragon. The, the what? The Black? In comparison to the fierce three-headed dragon Bargrin the Black, Cap Bargrin the Black and Liliana I guess was like telling us with their songs about, you know, the legend of this dragon and how he slayed it. Pella was really nothing more than an insect. So if all they needed to do was just cut her head off once, then that prolonged fight with Bargrin would prove invaluable. But the regen. They were words that reassured Subaru and the others greatly. 
They may not have experience fighting a dragon themselves, but with a certified dragon slayer standing right next to them, morale was at an all-time high. Now, an interesting line left out during this encounter was Subaru's attempt to question Capella's claim as the princess. It was upon hearing such an accusation, though, that Lust couldn't help but respond in utter confusion. Mm -hmm. It was a response that made it seem like maybe this was the real Capella. Oh, that would have been more nice content to kind of like further prove that she really is the Lugunican princess. Julius' attack then combined the might of all six of his greater spirits together, producing the exact same spell he wants to use on Betelgeuse. It was the sign for the battle to recommence, leading the oh, witch cultists to re-engage them. This time Wilhelm was the one to engage the lady, resulting in a sword fight that could only be described as perfection. To any person who was watching this, the exquisite display in front of them was nothing short of the pinnacle of swordsmanship. I am such an amateur that I just it just looks like two dudes just swinging a sword around. I, I can't appreciate it, but yes, Master Swordsman! On the other hand, Garfield had engaged the giant, setting in motion a battle of brutes. The two were exchanging heavy-hitting blows back and forth. It was shield and fist against arm and greatsword. So, if Wilhelm's battle was a silent symphony, then Garfield's was a roaring thunderstorm. Everyone else was dealing with Capella, who right before being hit by Julius' attack, unleashed a torrent of dragon breath scattering black flames everywhere. They didn't show it to us! Had Ricardo not intercepted it with his powerful howling skill, then- Are you serious? What the fuck? They did Ricardo dirty! Ricardo countered the dragon breath with his own? Everywhere. Had Ricardo not intercepted it with his powerful howling skill, that's then up. everyone below would have been hit head on by it. That's fucked up, bro. That's that's that Ricardo doesn't get enough, you know, credit or recognition. This would have been a great moment to show people how amazing Ricardo is, but you cut that shit out, it would have been so hype. The thing is, unfortunately, Ricardo's skill only dispersed the flames midair sending them scattering everywhere around them. It had created this hellish landscape of fire, burning any and everything around them. Oh, maybe it's better that they skipped it, now that I think about it. Uh-oh. Regardless of if the surface was flammable or not, the flames continuously expanded as if they had a life of its own. It was Capella's counter in her moment of, I guess, danger. One that definitely added to her threat level. All we got to see was her regeneration and insults, but by adding this, it would have shown that she's not afraid to engage in combat. Either way, I'm sure that message will be made clear next episode. Maybe? I think that maybe she has to hold back in case, you know, the, uh, the remains of Tifon, right? I, I don't know where they think it might be, but if they do too much damage around Pristella, maybe they could kind of fuck up retrieval of the remains, so I'm sure she has to kind of keep in mind of that. Now. Capella had a few more comments in line with her perverted nature, then proceeded to give an explanation as to whatever this was. As she would declare herself, this was her conquering death. She was what she referred to as a complete being. Someone immortal. who was supposedly immortal. Hmm. This made Subaru's list of enemies even more challenging, since when you really think about who Subaru's been up against, there was one who had bodies to spare, one that drags others down to the grave with them, one who was invincible, and now one that was immortal. The archbishops were definitely not easy opponents. Funnily enough, though, I'm sure that all we need is an attack that will just destroy Capella all in one go. Reinhardt would be the perfect one, right? That thing that he uses to uh, just like disintegrate everything entirely. Uh, you can't regenerate off of that. It was as Subaru put them all under the same umbrella that Capella would argue that she wasn't like them. For some reason, she didn't like being looped in with the rest of the archbishops. Hmm. That was the last thing she would say before returning inside, bringing us to a good place. Maybe she just hates the other archbishops? She looks down on them? She doesn't want to be categorized as them? She sees herself as more elite than others because of her immortality? Place to stop before next episode. So, if you liked learning more about what you missed from ReZero, Yes, sir. What is the likelihood that Subaru fucking identifies himself to it, you know, gluttony here? If you meet Gluttony, don't say you tell your name, right? You, we, we better be careful about that. But the interesting about this Gluttony is that it's Roy Alpher, and the Alpher constellation points and is related to the Hydra. Batankaitos is the Great Wild. Therefore, you could now assume there's three Gluttonies after the three Great Witch Fiends, and the authorities may have something in association with the Great Witch Fiends. And if this one, Hydra, is 
the serpent, and thank you, Mr. Nearly on Red, for the big brain analysis, would his authority be different than Lai? Therefore, if he told us his, our name to him, maybe it wouldn't matter. I'm expecting him to do some sort of like Venom-like attacks, but that's it from me. Please go give Mr. Any News a like on the video. Here's the link. Check it out, and I will see you next time.